Okay, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to divide two functions. So when you're dividing functions, um, it's basically just putting the one function over the other function. So f divided by g of x is equal to f of x divided by g of x. This can be very simple. It can also be very complex if you're dealing with rational functions. So I'm going to do an easy one, and I'm also going to do a rational function so you know how to deal with that. Um, the domain for this um, like all of the other ones, is your domain of f and your domain of g. So it's the intersection of your domain of f and your domain of g. And then you also have another restriction on this that g of x cannot equal zero. So whatever value is in the denominator, that cannot equal zero. So this is an additional restriction on your domain that was not on adding, subtracting, or multiplying. And the reason for that is now you're putting it in the denominator, and the denominator um, can't ever be zero. So that's why we have this additional restriction. So for the first one, if it tells us to find f divided by g, and even if it said g divided by f, that means you would just put g of x over f of x. So you can do this in more than one way. The f and the g just represent the equation, which equation you're talking about. So we would just simply take our f of x equation and put it over our g of x equation. So for this particular one, our f of x equation is 2x minus 3. And our g of x equation is x plus 1. Okay, This would be our answer because there is nothing that we can simplify. So this right here is um, the quotient or writing it as a division, um, writing the answer as a division. I can't simplify anything. Don't start trying to cross out the x because remember if there's groups, groups are more important than multiplication or division. So you would have to do the groups first before you start dividing. So unless the group is exactly the same, you cannot simplify it. So the domain of this one, remember that you have to look at your original two. You have to look at both f and g. So for this one, the domain for both of these originally is negative infinity to positive infinity because of the fact that both of these are just lines, okay? But now remember we have the additional restriction that our g of x equation cannot equal zero. So we would have to say that x plus one cannot equal zero. So we have the restriction that x cannot equal negative one. Because if I plug negative 1 into here, negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0, and it's undefined at that point. So if you write it in set notation, you would just say x such that x cannot equal negative 1. If you were to write it in interval notation, so again, this is set. Um, in interval notation, you would start with negative infinity. And it's going to be everything up to negative 1, but not including 1. So we use the parentheses. Or everything from negative 1 all the way up to positive infinity. So this would be interval notation. Like I said, if it's a linear equation over a linear equation, it's very simple. That would be your answer. Um, it can get more complicated if you have trinomials that can be factored and there are things that can be reduced. Um, but for the most part, dividing a binomial by a binomial is the easiest one. For this one, what we're going to do is we are going to do um, f divided by g of x. Okay, And so with this one, what we are going to do is we're going to take our f of x equation and divide it by our g of x equation. This one is a little more complicated because of the fact that we have fractions. So I would take my f of x equation, and this is what's going to go in the numerator. So I would have 1 over x plus 2. And then I'm going to put it all over my g of x equation. So I would do x over x minus 3. This is known as a complex fraction, and you cannot leave it in this form. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can either rewrite this as division using division of fractions, where it's 1 divided by x over 2 times the reciprocal of the other one. Or you can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the lowest common denominator. So in this case, 
um, my LCD is going to be um, x plus 2, so our LCD would be x plus 2 times x minus 3. And so if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that, I'm really multiplying by 1. But what happens is in the numerator, the x plus 2 cancels out, so I'm just left with x minus 3. And in the denominator, because I have x over x minus 3, this time the x minus 3 cancels. And I'm left with x times x plus 2, which you can either leave it like that or you can distribute. Either way, it doesn't matter. So you could write your answer as x minus 3 over, so f of g of x can be written as x minus 3 over x times x plus 2, or you can distribute it in and say it's x minus 3 over x squared plus x. Uh, sorry, x squared plus 2x by distributing it in. So either one of these would be acceptable answers. Um, it's really just kind of a preference of the teacher that you, whose class you're in. Um, I always accept both answers because I know that they are equivalent expressions. As far as the domain goes, remember, you have to look at the domain of your original functions. You can't just look at the answer. You have to look at the domain of the original. So the domain for this one is that x cannot equal negative 2. The domain for this one is that x cannot equal 3. We also have to look at the denominator of the final one, so we have to look at this part right here, and we see that x also cannot equal 0. So this whole thing cannot equal 0. So for this, our domain is going to be x such that x cannot equal negative 2, x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 3. Because remember, the additional restriction is that g of x, this value right now here, cannot equal 0. And if I plug in 0 for x, 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. So my restriction for this one, this is the additional restriction, is that um, the denominator in your final answer cannot equal 0. If you wanted to write this in interval notation, in interval notation you would start with negative infinity, and this would go up to negative 2. We would have a break at negative 2, and then it can also equal negative 2 up to 0. We would have an additional break here or it can go from 0 up to 3, where we would have another break or a hole in the graph, and then it would go from 3 all the way to infinity. So as far as writing this one, it's much easier to write this particular answer in set notation, but either one of these are acceptable forms of writing the domain of the quotient, which is the answer to the division problem for this one. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.